G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing a little bit of an unboxing and setting up some equipment. As you can see here, I've got a couple packages that have arrived in the mail. I'm gonna be showing you what they are. I'm gonna be setting them up in the fish room and also showing you some of the supplies that I bought. So let's get into this week's video. Okay, so the first package we're gonna be opening is this. And I believe it is some fish food. Can't believe this stuff is back in stock. It's been out of stock for some time. This stuff has been out of stock for some time and it is Rapashi. So I've got two Rapashi gel foods. These are the super green. I've never had them before. Let me adjust the exposure there so you can see it a bit better. So we've got some Rapashi super green gel food. I've used Rapashi before, but I've used the Soylent Green because this stuff wasn't in stock, but recently it's become available again. So I've purchased two of them uh, to take advantage of them being back in stock. You can see I purchased them from Nat's Fish in Australia. Great online store for sourcing your Rapashi gel foods. So I do recommend you check him out. Uh, so I'm not affiliated with him at all. He doesn't sponsor me or anything like that. I've purchased these on my own accord. Um, looking forward to trying these out and seeing how the fish go with them. It's a fantastic food for your cichlids, adults, as well as fry great overall food obviously this one the super green is pretty much a vegetarian food and you can see they've got some trophies to borzai on there indicating that anyway guys let's get on to the next thing that i've purchased okay and i'm pretty sure i know what this is um, it's a pretty heavy box uh, but it should be five kilos of my tanganyika buffer so this is the stuff that i use in my um, fish room because one it's pretty cheap and I've got a lot of fish and because of the volume of aquariums I've got I really can't justify spending uh, a lot of money on say the Seacom products so this is an alternative that I use again not sponsored by these guys although I wish I was it'd be great let's open this little satchel here without cutting open the actual packet and unveil its contents there we go as you can see on the label it's five kilograms of fish keepers choice four in one cichlid roof lake salt so this stuff is an all-in-one product it's a buffer for your gh and your ph i have soft water with a low ph so this is fine for me to use however you don't do not have control of increasing your gh kh or ph independently it increases them all at the same time so this product might not suit a lot of people however for instance if you have a high ph in your tap water but the water is soft, then I wouldn't recommend you use this product because it's gonna increase that pH further as well as make the water hard. So you do not have independent control of any of the, um, the GH, KH or pH in this product, but I've been using it for a number of months now, almost a year, and I really haven't seen anything significant happen to my cichlids. Uh, as you can see in all my videos, they're breeding really well. I'm breeding Alto Lamprologus calvus by almost the thousands now, Ventralis, Leilupes. I was breeding Lamprologus ocellatus gold, Neoleprologus, uh, Brevis sunspots, uh, Gelidochromus regani, Kawanga golds. So this stuff, I haven't noticed any difference once I switched over from Seacom to uh, Fish Keeper's Choice. However, the downside again is you can't independently change those parameters. Compared to the Seacom product, Seacom will dissolve in the water a lot quicker than this stuff, uh, but I put this in my water change barrels. I run internal power filters in my water change barrels just so uh, to help dissolve this and make it become soluble in the water column. So when I do my water changes, my water isn't cloudy at all. On to the next item. Well, that's always fun. You record a segment of video and realize you haven't actually pressed the record button. So let's start that again this box it was actually four packages wrapped in this black plastic i've unboxed one and that is this sun sun internal power filter this is the hj952 model 800 liter per hour model i also have the 1200 liter models as well as the 600 liter models so i now have all three of these uh, models that are easily available to purchase off ebay you can see you've got the power head at the top here and two filter compartments let's open the box and see what's inside so there's the filter this 800 liter per hour model has two uh, suction cups on the actual sponge filter compartments to keep it off the wall of the aquarium my 1200 liter per hour ones and 600 liter per hour models do not have these uh, suction cups on them it also has unfortunately the i think this is the european power plug adapter they don't come with wired uh, adapters to your uh, region so they come with an adapter that you plug into 
So for Australia, we have these angled adapters that uh, we use. So this has to plug onto that adapter. And that's one of the disadvantages of buying these cheapo filters off eBay. With the past filters that I've bought, the adapters fit uh, quite loosely, but this has a very tight feel and does not move anywhere near as much as the other models that I've bought in the past. Let's look at the internals of this filter. We've got these clips. With the other models, this just sits in a hole that you like the hole that you see there. This rim of plastic does not exist on the other models. Basically, this just fits in that hole and the friction alone holds the power head to the filter compartments. Now these filter compartments also clip off and on. So it's a little bit more tricky to get into for maintenance, which is a bit of a pain. And there's the filter sponge. Now, Again, with the 600 litre model and the 1,200 litre model, uh, there are some differences to this 800 litre model. So with the other models, the hole in the sponge is in the centre and uh, this internal uh, piece of plastic is in the centre as well. Uh, this one has it offset to the front of the pump. But uh, So there's the internal power filter. It comes with a ventry attachment to oxygenate the flow of water further. The actual fitting for the ventry pipe fits like this, goes on like that. We get some spray bar attachments, suction cups for the power head itself. Also another thing that's nice to have is some spare suction cups have come with this unit, so that's really good. We've got some clips to uh, mount the spray bar, some elbows and some other fittings uh, for the unit. Now in terms of cost, these pumps again are pretty cheap off eBay, readily available. You're going to find them uh, really easy on eBay. Uh, and now I have all three models. I've got the 600 litre per hour pump, the 800 which is this, the 800 litre per hour pump and the 1200 litre per hour pumps. Uh, the the 600 litre per hour pumps are a little bit underpowered, I feel, for my bristlenose catfish aquariums, which are about 100 litre aquariums with a lot of fish in them. I do find that in some areas there are some dead spots with the flow and their faeces does build up in some corners of the aquarium. So that filter runs on 10 watts of power, a very small amount of power. And that's what's great about these internal power filters now. This 800 litre per hour pump runs only at 16 watts. So very, again, very energy efficient, which is great. However, the 1,200 litre per hour pump runs at 22 watts. So a lot more power there. I use the 1,200 litre per hour pumps in my water change barrels to help me dissolve the fish keeper's choice rift lake buffer in those drums. I have the internal power filters pointing down towards the ground, towards the bottom of those drums to keep the water flowing and to keep that buffer suspended so it becomes dissolved in the water column. Now in terms of price, again, these things are pretty cheap off eBay. Uh, these units, especially when you buy them in bulk, like I have four, if you can consider that bulk, uh, does lower the price a little bit. And these cost me just under $15 a unit because I purchased more than one. So they are comparable to some double-headed sponge filters as well as the larger sponge filters. Of course, they're gonna be a little bit extra to run them in terms of power usage, but they are pretty energy efficient and they do help you keep your tanks a lot cleaner than a sponge filter can. I do like internal power filters purely because when I do my water changes, they capture all the feces during the week and then I just change out the filters, wash them under the tap, it's gonna be fine. I'm not really relying on them for biological filtration, I'm purely relying on these guys for mechanical filtration to keep the bottoms of the tanks clean with no feces on them so I don't really have to siphon the tanks out because the tanks I have these on are bare bottom aquariums. There's no actual substrate, no gravel, no sand, no pill filter sand in them. So these help me keep the tanks clean and save me time when it comes to water changes. All I have to do is wash the sponges out under the tap, replace them, happy days, it's all done. So the other three boxes on this package here are the exact same filters. So I've got four all up. Anyway, on to the next item. Radio and the last container I'm sure most of you guys want to know about and see unboxed is this one. And you can see there are three boxes taped together and they are my three five foot long LED lights for the new five foot aquariums. So I bit the bullet, decided to get three of these guys to light those aquariums because I was at one point considering lighting those five foot aquariums with LEDs, but spotlight LEDs. I do like the look that they give to an aquarium, but I went with these instead, just for uh, the, I want the fish room to look uniform. Now I was pretty lucky. 
I was able to get these for around $45 each. Again, because I bought multiples, I didn't buy one unit. Considering uh, they are quite rare on eBay at the moment, I was pretty lucky to get uh, them for that price. So let's unbox one of them and we'll have a look at what's inside. First thing that comes out, a transformer. These transformers are pretty weak. If your LED unit is gonna die, don't be fooled, the LED unit is probably still working. It's the transformer that's failed. That's what I've been finding with my units off eBay. Okay, we've got some attachments here because this box isn't five foot long. The unit is, but it actually comes in two parts. We've got the legs and the two units. Let's look at the units now. So we've got a two foot length and a three foot length. And we actually daisy chain these two units together to make the whole five foot long fitting. Let's unbox this part. And there we go. That's the two foot long component. It's got a little jack here that we're gonna to attach to the three foot long component. And then these are gonna brace into the unit here to support it from sagging. And that's what these are for. So we'll just unwrap the three foot long component. The instructions are in this plastic sleeve here. So here's our cord. And that's gonna to connect to the transformer. And we've got a little switch, which isn't on the unit. All my other units actually have the switch on the side of the unit here. But on these models, the switch is on the actual cord. So you've got your blue light and your white light. So all the lights turned on. Two options there. The mounting instructions and a little brochure, which I've never received before in my other purchases for uh, my LED lights. There you go guys, the other two boxes are exactly the same as this. So I'm gonna build this now, mount it on the aquarium, and we'll have a look at how it looks lighting up that tank. So you basically slide this component in a pre-drilled hole like that, and you can see it's here. And it comes with two screws, which are quite small. So I've got my little screwdriver here, and I'm gonna screw the screwdriver into the fitting, and that will hold it in place. We're gonna attach these little rods, and they've got stoppers uh, halfway along the bar into these pre-drilled holes and that's going to add some reinforcement to the entire unit so it doesn't sag. Next thing, we line up all the holes with the other unit and slide it in place. So those two bars, because they've got stoppers on them, can't slide in or out further. And then screw in your other screw on the other side. And now both units are screwed together. The next thing we do is to attach the two units together so power can transfer from one to the other. They only fit in one way, screw them together, and now both units are one. The last thing we wanna do is attach the legs to the ends of the unit. So we've got the ends of the unit here, and there's two holes on the unit at the bottom. So they just slide in to those holes, and you can extend them out or in as you need. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare this five foot length of lighting to the current lighting I have in the aquarium, which is again, a cheap eBay LED unit. And uh, we're gonna compare the lighting output. So I'm gonna have the same camera settings on for both scenes. So the actual unit that I have on the aquarium at the moment on that five foot aquarium is a four foot length unit. Uh, these units are five foot long, so in theory it should be a little bit brighter than the four foot unit. Also the color temperature may vary as well, but we'll see what it looks like. So let's get into the fish room now. Hey okay, guys, so here is the five foot aquarium with all the Leilupi and Regani Fry. Now on the tank, like I said before, we have the four foot LED unit that is lighting this. So my DSLR camera settings are gonna be exactly the same when I put the five foot unit on and we'll see how much of a difference it makes and how bright it makes the tank appear. Now guys, the new light is on the aquarium. Five foot long, the tank looks a little more uniformly lit. The corners were a little dark, obviously, because there's about half a foot either side of the aquarium that didn't have the light above it. Overall, this looks a lot nicer. Now, is it necessary? Probably not, but I wanted all the tanks to have pretty much the same LED units and uh, all similar design to the tops of the tanks, and they do now. So I'm really happy about that. They all look pretty much the same. What I'm gonna do now is turn on both units, and let's see how that looks. So now we've got a four foot unit at the back, and uh, a five foot unit at the front. So guys, I've put the internal power filter in the five foot aquarium, turned it on, 800 liters per hour. It is 
It's starting to filter out the feces, it's starting to shift it around the aquarium. So you can see it's kicked up a little bit into the water column. And hopefully over the next few hours, a lot of that feces will be caught up in the internal power filter, enabling me to do easier water changes on these aquariums. So at the end of the day, when I'm doing my water changes, I don't have to siphon out the feces, it gets caught up in the filters. All I have to do is clean the filter. Way easier than siphoning it out uh, manually every week. So I really do recommend you guys look at investing in some of these filters uh, if you are running bare bottom aquariums and want to make your water changes a little bit easier. So there you have it guys, some brand new equipment for the brand new five foot aquariums, as well as some supplies for running the fish room. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.